And here we go. Ten. Hydrogen yeah, burnoff igniters initiated. Seven, six, five, four stage engine start. Three, two, one. Boosters in ignition. And liftoff of Artemis One. We rise together back to the moon and beyond. With that, the first launch in NASA's Artemis program is in the books. The third try was the charm for Artemis One, which launched in the early morning hours of November 16th. Hey there, I'm digital anchor Brandi Smith, here with a look at what this means for NASA and for the future of space travel. Real quick before we get going, mind hitting the like and subscribe buttons for me? That lets us know you want to see more KHU 11 Plus specials like this one. Okay, let's start with a breakdown of exactly what NASA expected from this mission. Ahead of the launch, Betsy Kling gave us a play-by-play. -play. The first 20 minutes after launch will be everything. Once the rocket clears the tower, a precision time series of events will take Artemis 1 more than 2,300 miles from Earth. Just getting 5.75 million pounds off the ground is a feat, and the solid rocket boosters burning six tons of fuel per second will provide 75% of the thrust needed to leave Earth. At seven seconds, the rocket will be at 563 feet, going about 80 miles per hour, and will roll to steer it into the correct path to orbit. The rocket will encounter its greatest atmospheric resistance for the next minute and a half. At 2 minutes and 12 seconds, the boosters are done and will be jettisoned. They'll be retrieved from the ocean later. At 3 minutes and 30 seconds, the launch abort system, the nose cone of the rocket, will separate. After burning a little more than 8 straight minutes, main engines will shut off and the core stage will separate from the ICPS, the Interim Cryogenic Propulsion System, that's connected to the Orion space capsule. As the ICPS and Orion orbit Earth, Orion's solar arrays will stretch out. Then the ICPS will fire, giving Orion the big push needed to leave Earth's orbit. This major milestone is known as the translunar injection. It gives Orion the precise turn to reach the moon's gravitational grasp. Two hours after launch, the ICPS will separate from Orion, which will continue on toward the moon. Meanwhile, tucked inside the ICPS, a payload of 10 small satellites, the CubeSats, will be deployed. Orion will take several days to reach the moon and skirt the surface by a mere 60 miles. This sets up a slingshot, taking Orion on a path 40,000 miles past the moon, the farthest any spacecraft built for humans has flown. It will remain on a distant retrograde orbit for at least 10 more days. When it's time to begin the journey home, Orion will perform a return-powered flyby burn, another major precision milestone, in order to make the close sweeping pass to the moon's surface and catapult pulled it back toward Earth. On its approach to Earth, Orion will make a dramatic and fiery return as the atmosphere slows the capsule to about 300 miles per hour. At 26,000 feet, the first of four sets of parachutes will deploy to slow it down for a safe, gentle 20 mile per hour splashdown off the coast of San Diego. Artemis One is the first of three missions that will work up to sending man back to the moon and sending a woman on that trip for the first time. I want to emphasize work up to because Artemis One is unmanned, sort of. We'll explain that in a few minutes. When Artemis Two launches in 2024, according to NASA, it will have astronauts on board. And then comes Artemis Three, which NASA says will land the first woman and first person of color on the moon. That should happen in 2025. Jason Miles was there as candidates for the Artemis mission graduated back in January 2020. NASA's 13 newest astronauts came from a pool of more than 18,000 applicants. They could eventually blast off on missions to the ISS, the moon, and possibly even Mars. Without further ado, let's welcome the world's newest astronauts to the stage. A mock-up of the moon greeted NASA's newest astronauts who are now eligible for space flight after more than two years of basic training. In addition to expeditions on the International Space Station, these astronauts could one day, in fact, walk on the moon as a part of the Artemis program, and per perhaps one of them could be among the first humans to walk on Mars. This class includes 11 NASA candidates, as well as two from the Canadian Space Agency, all chosen from a record-setting pool of potential astronauts back in 2017. Ladies and gentlemen, your newest astronaut, 
Laurel O'Hara. Yeah. Astronaut Laurel O'Hara grew up right here in Sugar Land and used to visit the Johnson Space Center as a child. And in second grade, my class got to fly tomato plants on the space shuttle. The Clements High graduate later earned a master's degree in aeronautics and astronautics from Purdue University. Her NASA classmates range from jet pilots to a medical doctor and Navy SEAL. The chances of, act of it actually becoming true are so uh, just so low and improbable, um, so to have it actually come true is pretty surreal. Applauded by fellow astronauts, Space Center staff, their families, and others. You know, there's a technical term for these men and women, and that's badass. <laughs> the real work now begins for NASA's newest explorers. NASA's administrator made some news here today by announcing that new astronaut applications will be accepted beginning this spring. You can see more from today's ceremony on KHOU.com. The applications went in, NASA evaluated them, and in December 2020, we learned which astronauts would be part of Artemis. Hi, I'm Chell Linger. My name is Raja Chari. Kayla Barron. Kate Rubens. Hi, I'm Christina Cook. NASA astronaut Joe Acaba. Jessica Meir. Woody Hoberg. Anne McLean. Stephanie Wilson. My name is Johnny Kim. Nicole Mann. Victor Glover. Jessica Watkins. Hi, I'm Matthew Dominic. Jasmine Mokbelli. Frank Rubio. Scott Tingleton. There you have it. The Artemis team of 18 astronauts is 50% women. And these folks certainly had their work cut out for them over the years that followed. Our goal is to go to the moon sustainably, to learn how to live and work on another world so that ultimately we can take all of that knowledge onto Mars. None of those astronauts were on board Artemis 1. It was unmanned, but they will be on future missions. The Orion capsule wasn't totally empty, though. Snoopy got a ride to the moon. NASA says it sent up a stuffed toy of the famous Peanuts character wearing a custom orange flight suit with gloves, boots, and a NASA patch. Mannequins were on board too, one of them named after a Johnson Space Center engineer who was instrumental in another famous moon mission. Jason Miles spoke with his family. NASA calls mannequins moonikins, and it's not just a dummy in the capsule atop Artemis. It will collect data beneficial to actual astronauts. As dozens awaited Artemis 1's launch this morning at Space Center Houston's viewing party. You know, you could watch it at home, but there's nothing like being here. It's really exciting. These two daughters of a late NASA electrical engineer. Arturo B. Campos. Watched from Johnson Space Center's Artemis Mission Control. If he only knew, you know, I have a feeling he does. Arturo Campos, who passed away in 2001, was instrumental in bringing Apollo 13's crew back to Earth in 1970, following an onboard mishap. Hey, we've had a problem here. His daughters recall their mom telling them what happened. She said, uh, NASA called dad. You know, they're having a, a hard time with getting the astronauts back or something like that. Campos's name is now attached to the newest moon mission. Moonikin Commander Campos is the name of this mannequin on board Artemis 1, thanks to the results of a naming contest. He would be surprised, honestly. I mean, it's 50 years later and and here we are. The Moonikin is wearing a flight suit and is capable of collecting valuable data. What's the word that keeps you instrumental in gathering information for future astronauts? A nod to NASA's past, providing another reason to be proud of their dad. A third Campos sister traveled to Florida to watch the planned launch in person. The two I interviewed today are kind of glad they didn't go after all. Reporting from Space Center Houston, Jason Miles, KHOU 11 News. There are many stories to tell about the mission's personnel, human or not. You could say the same thing about the equipment. I want to hit pause here and rewind a little bit. Artemis 1 is the first launch of the space launch system known as SLS. Bel Capo was there back in 2014 when work started on the core of the SLS. It's a huge blue metal tower, 170 feet tall. The Vertical Assembly Center is the world's largest spacecraft welding machine. Irma Thomas was amazed. It's magnificent. It's just unbelievable to see this kind of equipment in one building. Uh, I am awed. You know, I've seen some big structures before. Um, having had an opportunity to fly on shuttle, that's big. This is, this is monstrous. It will weld the core of the biggest rocket ever built called the Space Launch System designed to send astronauts to Mars. The core stage is the heart of the Space Launch System. So, New Orleans Michoud Assembly Facility is the lifeblood building 
the heart of America's next rocket. Hundreds of Mishu workers applauded the city's reborn space program. It's 23 flights of steps, 253 steps total. It's like you get to the top, it's like, <gasps> you know, you're, you're bent over, it's like, and it's hot. But you look so proud. Oh, definitely, definitely. The first launch for the new rocket is scheduled for 2018, but they're already working on it. In fact, they're beginning to assemble the pieces in the building next door. This is going to be needed pretty quickly. I can tell you right now, the team is really anxious for us to get done today and get out of here so they can get back on the tool. Look out, here we go. We're back off into space. This is our next step in our uh, continuing effort in space exploration. And New Orleans is part of it. And New Orleans is, is the hub of it. I'm Bill Capo, Eyewitness News. Seven years later, in January 2021, NASA held what's called an air hot fire test in Mississippi. The four engines ran for eight full minutes, generating 1.6 million pounds of thrust. All systems appeared to be a go, and the most powerful rocket in the world was scheduled to launch on August 29, 2022. A few days before, I chatted with NASA's Sean Fuller about the start of this new era. There's a great buzz around here at the Johnson Space Center. Because this rocket, now staged at Kennedy Space Center, is scheduled to launch Monday. And when it does, Mission Control here in Houston will manage the 42-day Artemis One mission. We've done a lot of testing on the ground ahead of time. You test all the systems, but as an integrated vehicle, this is the first time to fly it. Fly it roughly 40,000 miles to the far side of the moon and back, farther than any space vehicle has ever carried humans. Still just a stepping stone toward the final destination. You know, the moon is about 240,000 miles away, but it's significantly closer to Mars. So the moon can be kind of a base camp. We're really expanding the frontier of human exploration out to the moon and then doing that scouting mission out to Mars too in the future where we look to then eventually expand beyond that as well. Like so many at NASA, Fuller hopes Artemis, like Apollo did, will ignite a curiosity about space. We as a human species, we've always been exploring what's over the next hill, what's over the next mountain, what's west of the Mississippi River, all that exploration. We're just doing that now off of the Earth. Of course, we know what happened. NASA scrubbed that launch after engineers detected an issue with the third engine, which didn't reach the proper temperature range for startup. They also spotted a crack in the thermal protection system material. Natalie Ferrari was there as visitors got the news. As the sun rose over the Kennedy Space Center, it's pretty phenomenal something to see. Our sights were set on heading back to the moon and a rocket. And folks were more than excited for their trip to the Space Coast to witness history. We've been promising our son Trey that he could watch this rocket launch now for about four years. So five, five, five. years. <laughs> Said my heart's racing right now, waiting for it. Hopefully it launches today. Thank you all for being here today. I apologize. Unfortunately, Monday's attempt to launch Artemis One was scrubbed after multiple delays related to fueling and cooling down one of the rocket's four main engines to the right temperature for launch. The overall feeling. Oh no, man. So that's a bummer. Maybe next time, right? We'll be back. Made a commitment. Got to honor it. Well, hopefully they get the issue fixed and we'll be back here Friday. Hopefully. Hopefully. <laughs> Artemis One is a unique combination of machinery. An Orion capsule sits on top of the Space Launch System rocket, the world's most powerful rocket that will take the Orion capsule, multiple astronauts within it, as well as more cargo directly to the moon in a single mission. One of the main goals for Artemis One will be to analyze more of the lunar surface than ever before. It will also test all that the Orion spacecraft and systems can accomplish in a spaceflight environment, as well as ensure a safe reentry, descent, splashdown, and recovery in the Pacific Ocean. This is all leading to what will then be the first flight with a crew on Artemis Two, and then after that, on Artemis Three, NASA will land the first woman and person of color on the moon. Very excited to see Artemis One launch. I think the world's going to be different after it does. Yeah, and it's a big moment for us and all of the Canadian delegation because we're we're looking to put someone on Artemis Two. As for the big picture, Artemis One will be the first in a series of complex missions to build a long-term human presence on the moon and eventually beyond. So NASA decided to try again a few days later, September 3rd. Scrubbed again. 
but it wasn't all bad news for those who came out to a watch party at Space Center Houston. As Zach Tawatari reported, the historic mission is about a lot more than just going into space. Another delay for Artemis 1 this Labor Day weekend, and while that return trip to the moon has been pushed back, it hasn't stopped space from moving forward. It was hardly the result anyone was hoping for Saturday. I was really disappointed. <laughs> like eight-year-old Eleanor, who wanted to view the launch at Space Center Houston and sees herself one day going to space. I want to be an astronaut or a famous scientist. But like so many eagerly waiting around the world, didn't get to watch Artemis 1 lift off just yet. Uh, we understood the hydrogen leaks that we had on, on Monday. Those are different than the leak that we had today. We were confident coming into today, but as the administrator said, we're not going to launch till we're ready. Still, despite the second scrubbed launch for humanity's return to the moon. Space is hard and there's a lot of dynamic moving parts. Space Center Houston's Mary Berg says the attention any launch brings to the last frontier is an opportunity to make an early impression bringing people and space closer together. This is the Artemis generation. We need that group of kids to be inspired. And there's so many different roles that people can play besides being an astronaut. Like 11 year old Ryland. What I want to be when I grow up is somebody who studies the rocks that they bring back from the moon and Mars. Who very well could find himself part of a future mission. The goal of Artemis to lead the way in going further into space than we've ever gone before. We want more we can discover with all of our new technology. And while another delay puts a damper on today, it's clear that our curiosity and relentless pursuit have made for a bright tomorrow. We don't know too much about space because it's so big. From Space Center Houston, Zach Tawatari, KHOU 11 News. Finally on November 16th, the wait was over. Artemis 1 successfully launched and started its weeks-long mission. So what comes next? NASA is preparing for Artemis 2, which, if you remember, will be manned. They'll take a ride around the moon. And if all goes well, that sets the stage for Artemis 3 and the first moon landing in more than 50 years. Of course, KHU 11 and our sister stations will be with you all along the way, covering all the updates and preparations for this new era of NASA. Check out khu.com slash space for those headlines, as well as past stories we've done. You can also text the word moon to 713-526-1111, and we'll send you links to those stories on demand. And if you've made it this far, make sure you hit like and subscribe so you can keep up to date on what's happening with the Artemis mission and more.